Hey, but, but tonight we're gonna deal with having the tenacity, having the tenacity to stand. And I wanna look at Ephesians chapter six, verse 10, familiar passage of scripture, those that you know, really disseminate the word of God, amen. Ephesians 6, 10, uh, 14, it says this, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces and evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day. Having done all, stand firm, therefore having fashion the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen, somebody. Let's, let me just give you a note real quick. Biblically, the light represents the truth. Grace is the awesome activity of God. Darkness represents sin and evil in the realm of Satan. Light dispels darkness and gives a glance and it serves as a beam to pointing to a safe death, uh, destination. But he said, finally, my brother, Amen. be strong in the Lord. In other words, what the text is, what, it, what it's saying is, what it's insinuating is, is this, that we should be strong, not in our own finite strength, but in his strength. In other words, we have to consistently rely on who God is in us. Sometimes we, we, we get it misconstrued to the point that we rely on our own strength, and that's why we have burnout sometimes as Christians. Come on, man. Because we become workaholics to the fact is we think that if we work to exhaust it, it's going to prove something. Oh, Sometimes it don't prove anything. Right. But of course, so we just stay on with me. Just stay with me. He said, Follow my brother, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to do what? Stay. Yeah. We live in a day and age now that we see a lot of Christians that are not. Grind to stand, scared to sway his shoulders to stand, scared to look the enemy in the face to stand. But what they got to like about them? Amen. The first said the chapter 17, when David heard of the Goliath, this uncircumcised Philistine giant. And, and, and sometimes you hear about enemies. Amen. It, it, it's funny how people try to name drop, amen, in certain arenas and certain areas of life. If, 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 if corporate America really want to try to put a scare tactic on the world, try to put a scare tactic, they got to name drop. Anybody that worked in, in corporate America before or had your own office, when they really want to put you in a vice or put you in a vehicle, in a pickle, they want to name drop. They were like, I know Dr. So-and-so, and I know the director of the company, and I know the judge, and I know this one, and I know sister so-and-so, and I know Dr. So-and-so, and I know this person and that person, and they try to put you in a place of fear. But here they bring in lunch. It's amazing how God will set up a situation and a circumstance and a turn around and gain victory at the same identical time. Get a shepherd boy, bring at lunch. He hearing about this giant. I'm going somewhere. Go ahead, go ahead. And he hears about this giant, and, and the giant is making his threats. But one thing I like about David, David had the tenacity to stand. Because the Bible reminds us, and the Ephesians, I'm going back there. The Bible, he said, put on the whole. See, a lot of times the battle, we are not winning no way. You try to fight it. But the scripture never told you to fight it. He just said, stand. Therefore, put your lungs going about with truth. In other words, the lungs means to tie all loose ends together. Truth means truthfulness. All right. Help somebody. Amen. Put Not 
natural battle. Sometimes blood fly. Sometimes spit fly. Sometimes many things fly in a fight. But when you're fighting in the spiritual battle, sometimes you get wounded in the spirit realm. You get dents in your armor. But the Bible never told you to take it off. You gotta maintain it and keep it on. Somebody said, put on the whole armor. You can't fight unless you equip. That's why you can't win in the prayer life because you have to be fully equipped. Then they talk about the helmet of salvation. The region, the area, the CPU, CPU of the body, the central processing unit. And that's what the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4.23, the guard the heart will all do diligence. Why? Because from it flows the issues of life. That's why you got to guard your conscience. Why? Because if you allow yourself to get inundated with so much thing, you allow yourself to allow so much to come in you, therefore you will be able to not be able to stand. Put on the whole world. Then he talked about the shield, the shield of faith, the temptation, the fiery darts. You got to have the shield, something that you can block off something, something that can guard you from something that's being shot at you, something that's trying to penetrate your spirit, man. Many people are being penetrated by the spirit. Why? They got the arm on, but they left their shield. They come to church, but they ain't ready for prayer. They in Bible study with no Bible. How you gonna get some from the word of God and you ain't got a Bible? You don't have a prayer in your heart and you try to gotta wait six weeks to get a message, but yet and still you have been sent to preach the gospel. You've been sent to fight in the war and you come out here telling me I gotta go back and get the belt. I gotta go back and get the feet shot with the propagation of the gospel, but yet and still you can't get a first stand. Why? Because you are half equipped. You're half equipped. When the Bible talks about the shoes being shod, in other words, a soldier, a Roman soldier, when he would fight, he would put nails in his shoes. Why the reason why he would put this in there? They ain't like in this day and age where they got the fancy cleats. You know, about, about Bishop, Bishop Turner know about the cleats. The nice cleats to help you run fast and give you all types of agility and ability. Amen. But what they would do, they would put nails in their boots. And nails would give them a firm stand. See, some of us don't have a firm stand on the gospel. That's why we're still waiting. That's why we're still asking questions. That's why we're still scratching our head with some devil or some jigger who come with some false doctrine. And we got to go back and talk about, let me see what the Bible say. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not tell on somebody. You got to have it in your heart. something to you. But here Daniel presented with the king's delicacies. And some people say it was a Daniel fast. No, no, no. The reason why Daniel didn't eat it, if you look at examine the text, is because who it was sacrificed to. Okay. It was sacrificed to idols. That's the one. Right. So that's why Daniel didn't partake in it because he knew if he would partake in it, then he would partake in the God of the idol that it was sacrificed to. Now some people say, I don't eat pork, I don't eat chicken. Well, bless your heart, because I'm gonna eat pork, I'm gonna eat chicken, I'm gonna eat shrimp, I'm gonna eat ribs. Come on, I'm gonna eat fish too. The Bible said we can wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, sometimes we think we find the person we see. There was an enemy in you. There was an inner individual that's residing. And you, you need to possess by two, 
two. Say it to God. That's it. Either your child of God or your child of Satan. Amen. 